Again, the Oliver family uh, asking the hand of God to rest upon them, to lift them, to comfort them, and care for them. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Some of you understand you've been in that same place, the loss of a mother and all of that means, and only the hand of God can bring comfort. Only he can care for the brokenhearted. But we can be his hands, and we can bring words of comfort. We're not powerless in this matter. We don't weep as those who have no hope, because we just believe there's another better place somewhere. And if this circle be unbroken, God, hey, God has a better home awaiting in the sky. Would you bless him one more time? Thank you so much for your patience. Thank God for Sister Bolin. Brother Bolin, so glad to see you here today and for the ministry. For all of you who came up to sing, God bless you. Y'all some brave souls. Amen. Amen. Second Samuel chapter 6. Again, we pray that you will read this in uh, the time of your devotion this week, the, the entire chapter of 2 Samuel chapter 6. Pray as you're reading uh, that God will give you illumination, understanding, and application so what the word is saying in the book might come alive in your life. Y'all say amen. amen. And it reads, again, the New National Version, it reads, David again brought together out of Israel chosen men, 30,000 in all. He and all his men set forth to Bala, Judah, to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name, the name of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubim that are on the ark. They set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Abinadab, which is on the hill, Wuza and Ahio, sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart. And with the ark of God on it, Aio was walking in front of it. David and the whole house of Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord with songs, with harps, lyres, tambourines, sistrums, and cymbals. Verse 6. When they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzziah reached out and took hold of the ark of God because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzziah because of the irrelevant act, irre irreverent act. Therefore, God struck him down, and he died there beside the ark of God. May the Lord add a blessing to readers, the hearers, and the doers of his most holy and righteous word. Will you bow your heads? Kind Father God, we thank you. 10,000 tongues would not be sufficient to give you praise. Thank you. Thank you for being a keeper, a covering, a protector. Thank you now for being a light in dark places that we might not stumble in sin, but walk boldly to the throne of grace, seeking mercy, forgiveness, power over all and every dynamic situation. Pray, Father, that you allow us in a few moments to be removed from every earthly distraction and to gain an audience in your presence, that your word might enlighten us, inform us, inspire us, cause us to leave this place a little more determined to follow you than when we arrived. We ask this blessing and all other blessings in the strong name of Jesus and all of God's people everywhere said amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand praise with you. Amen. You might be seated. God bless you. I want to talk this morning. I know we've got a lot going on. We thank God for the um, coming together of the saints to bring us into debt free in 23. All right. Can y'all say that debt free in 23? Ain't nothing wrong with that, is it? Amen. Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, I want to talk a little bit from the subject. You should have known better. I, I don't know if you was raised around um, parents that believe, the, I guess, depending on, on how far you were, if you, if you were in the county, if you were in the suburbs, they call it spanking. Everybody in the hood got whoopings. <laughs> and around our part of the woods, they, they often would re begin the whooping dialogue. You see, a good whooping come with a discussion first. 
you know, good whooping has some words that come in front and some words that go along with it. And one of the things they'll say, you ought to know better. Now, you knew better than this. And, and, you know, I often said that for most of us, knowing better, knowing what's right, knowing what to do that's right, has seldom been the issue. Now, there are some of us who just was ignorant, didn't know no better, and I guess the whipping helped us. But for many of us, the whipping or the spanking or the discipline only served to remind us, now you knew better. So knowing better has not really been our greatest challenge in life. It's the ability, the strength, the will, when you agree, to do what we know is right. Look at this slide right here. There, there's, there's a father who had uh, painted the, the back porch, painted the back porch, and his kids were running around the yard. He said, now listen, Junior, stay off this porch now. It's the paint is drying. And the son's reply was, I'll be careful. I'll be careful. Now, daddy wasn't asking him to be careful. He was asking him to be obedient. Oftentimes, God is not asking us to be careful. He's not asking us to try to do our best, but rather he's asking us, obey me. One of my pet peeves that I have about children, especially young children that are just learning to walk and talk, is certain levels of obedience, like when I say, come here. You know, Oftentimes, grandmothers and grandpas and fathers and mothers, we, we fall out of a certain parental guidance concepts. And one of the things somehow always bothered me is when I asked a young child to come here, and they don't, and they're defiant, and I have to go get them. And just a few days ago, and I'm, I'm a little older than a young child, you would agree, I was in um, the Dallas area coming out of Home Depot with some items for the National Church. And this car came so close to hitting me, I touched it. Happened so fast until the folks around me said, man, it's a good thing you wouldn't walk no faster. I didn't even see him. He was going so fast in the parking lot. I didn't see him coming. Are you with me? And my thought is when I call a young child, come here, there may be an opportunity where that child's in danger, and you need to come out the way. It's not about you being overbearing or being, uh, this is about helping you survive and live beyond that thing which you did not see coming. And there are times where God needs us to respond without question. <laughs> um, the story in our text is one of those Bible passages that tend to make people feel uncomfortable. And, 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 and here's a man who lost his life, and all he did was touch the Ark of the Covenant, this holy relic, because in his mind, it was about to fall off the cart. Listen. Nobody likes feeling uncomfortable. We have, for the most part, become creatures of comfort. Consequently, most churches today are more into catering to people than honoring God. People don't really want to read the Bible and think, pray, and apply. They would prefer PowerPoints with fancy graphics and loud music and a dark room with a brilliant stage and polished performers and sermonettes that make us feel good about ourselves and definitely gets us out of there before noon. And this particular passage about Uzzah doesn't really leave us feeling all warm and fuzzy, does it? The gist of this story is that the Ark of the Covenant that has served as an external symbol of God's presence with his people, have been in seclusion, hidden away for years. 
Hidden in obscurity, King David now, in this chapter, desires to bring the ark back to a place of public adoration. Gone from public view for some 75 years, the Bible tells us that the ark was being kept in the home of a Levite named Abinadab. King David decided it was time. It was time to bring the ark to Jerusalem and calls upon 30,000 of his nobles and religious attendants to join him in bringing the ark to Jerusalem while providing a joyous escort and procession. It was during the grand parade while the musicians played the songs of praise and the people sang and danced for the Lord that a wheel on the cart which the ark had been placed, hit a rough spot, and the ark shifted. At that point, one of Abinadab's sons, named Uzzah, placed his hand on the ark, hoping to prevent it from falling. But to the horror of everybody present, when Uzzah's hand touched the ark, the Bible says God immediately struck him dead right there and then. Hmm. Now, that story don't make you want to shout, do it? Thank you! That doesn't really make you feel like running, clapping your hands, does it? We sung the hymn Jesus loves me, this I know. Y'all ever heard that? And we sung it so loud, we drowned out the hymn that says, yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Within us, we secretly question the severity of Uzzah's punishment. Now, you can look all devil proof and super righteous but he died because he touched the box was that overkill we ju was just Uzzah touching the ark to keep it from tumbling worthy of God taking his life brothers and sisters it's always uncomfortable for us to witness the judgment of God I'm serious it's always, we don't mind hearing stories about, yeah, you know, and then the, the tornado was coming, and somehow it just lifted. With over all, this whole neighborhood, oh, bless God. We like to hear that we don't, we, don't, we don't want to talk about when it comes down and tore up everything. It's something uncomfortable about a God that means business. The judgment hand of God is not confined to just this passage. Look at, look at the other slide. Look at me at the next slide. Did you know Aaron, sons, Nadab, and Abinahu were struck dead because they brought the wrong kind of sacrificial fire before God? They, 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 they were just trying to do something in the worship. Achan one of the followers of Joshua. Aquin and his family were destroyed for stealing some clothes and some jewelry out of the city of Jericho. Come on to the New Testament. Ananias and Sapphira were struck dead because they lied about their tithing. I know it's rough. Just why did God choose this course of action in this matter? I dare not attempt to interpret the mind of God, but it does stand to reason that often God will dispense judgment to remind his people that one thing never changes. God's word must be obeyed. In like manner, had God not addressed the matter in such a way, the people may have begun to lose respect and reverence for God. You know, I've enjoyed living long enough to have grown children. And it's nice sometimes, I remember one a few years ago, 
we had a little Waddell gathering in, in Gatlinburg, and the Robs was unable to go, and so Chesley and Jordan actually drove me. They were driving the car. I sat in the back, and that was the oddest feeling. I feel that way when I see Ellis driving. It just seems odd. <laughs> And uh, I'm in the back in the car. I, I remember bringing y'all home from the hospital in pumpkin seats. And though we, we're all adults and we can have some conversations every now and then, I have to remind them uh, uh, they'll turn the corner in that conversation. Wait a minute now. I'm still your daddy. Now hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on now. Hold on. We cool now. All that. We all, we, 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 shopping, we all shopping at Foot Locker. It looks good in here. But wait a minute. And, and, and as close as I want to be to the Savior, and as much as I want to be in this Holy Spirit of God, every now and then God has to remind us, now wait a minute, I'm not the man upstairs. <laughs> I'm the God that stands everywhere on everything. Heaven is my throne. The earth is my the world earth is the Lord, the world. And they that dwell therein. And sometimes he has to just remind you, Sister Mims, I don't have to explain what I'm doing to you. I just don't. I don't have to tell you why it went this way and not your way. And so sometimes I think things occur in life to remind us, now I'm still terrible. I'm for real. Nehemiah called him terrible. I'm still terrible. I'm still able to prove who I am. Y'all gonna pray with me? No, so, so here's some things, some lessons, some takeaways. I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna let you get your popcorn. Oh, y'all want to sample that popcorn? Some takeaways from this lesson. Number one, some things to be aware of. Beware of the sin of worldly influences. Listen to the verse. They set the ark of God on what? A new cart. Now underline that. A new cart. And brought it from the house of, of Abinadab, which is on the hill Uza and Aoe. Help me out with this. Ao, sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart. The Bible tells us that David, along with some 30,000 escorts, were so excited about the prospect of bringing the ark to Jerusalem that a spontaneous celebration erupted, dancing, singing, praising God. But there was no record here, listen now, of David or any of his merry men ever praying and asking God regarding how they should deal with something so as immensely holy as the ark of the covenant. David, along with the crowd of followers, listen now, had seen the pagan Philistines, the world, haul or carry their deities on carts. And after God had stricken the Philistines with disease because they had stolen the ark, the Philistines brought the ark back on a cart. Hear me now. Uh, and so the folk with David said, well, if they put it on the cart, if they bring it on the cart, then we'll bring it on the cart. Look, look at the slide right here. See, some Christians are like chameleons. We change depending on who we are around. And they said, well, since the world does it this way, now we talk about beware of worldly influences. So we could go ahead and handle our business accordingly. Okay, give me the next slide. But that's not how God told them to carry the ark. No, are you with me? God had not instructed the Philistines. They were not his people. And sometimes the world will get away with stuff that God will allow you to try. Grandma was chewing tobacco. And you messed around when you was a little girl and got you a piece. And about choked the fool out of you. 
I, listen, skillet and, and, and bow drink like fish. You got a couple of beers, that'll carry you home. Folk have been clocking out early, coming in late, ducking and hiding, and as soon as you took some paper clips out the storage file, you got reprimanded. And, and, and there are times when your children would say to you, Mama, Daddy, can we do this or do that because the folk across the street let their kids do it. They stay out till 11 o'clock. We got to come in when the street lights come on. Well, I'm not raising the kids across the street. <laughs> Listen. They, re they rationalize that as in much as other folk had done it and had received no punishment for doing so, then they too had the right to exercise the same option. Just because the crowd agreed with it didn't make it right. And as a child of God, you can get in a whole lot of trouble trying to be like somebody else. Like Uzzah, we are guilty of tossing God back on the cart of our own creation and going about our way singing and dancing, going about our business all the while disregarding God's divine directives, choosing rather to cart God through our own agendas. Many times we've been guilty of not inquiring in prayer concerning what God's will is for us. We simply pack God up on the cart of our own will and take God along for the ride. And even though they may have meant well, even though they were singing and dancing to God, no amount of well intentions and singing and shouting can ever compensate for disobedience. James says, the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. You cannot do the right thing in the wrong way and expect God to bless it. To beware of influence because somebody else did it and got away with it. Number two, what other takeaway? Beware of the sin of minimizing God. When they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzziah reached out and took hold of the ark of God because what? The, 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 the auction stumbled. The, folk, the animals pulling the cart. Uzziah was convinced that somehow God wasn't big enough to deal with the stumbling of an ox and therefore required his assistance. <laughs> there are occasions when we overlap our Christian authority and move into God's jurisdiction. As I came into the office of Bishop I found myself doing all, all I can do simply to stay out of the way of God. A little Rex goes a long way to jack stuff up, and you'd be surprised what God can do better without me. You'd be surprised how many times God has not asked for my opinion. <laughs> be, I, I know y'all can't believe that, how many times God has not inquired with me what he should do. <laughs> Are you with me? You'd be shocked. I know y'all thought that me and God talk all the time, but seldom ever, or how can I just say never, <laughs> has God asked me for my opinion? Are you with me? The Bible says that we are the branches. Jesus described us as being branches and that he was divine. And divine brings all the nourishment all the strength, the branches. And he says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. He goes on to say, and without me, he says, you can do nothing. And that's how my prayer starts out in the morning. I suggest you borrow that from the pastor. 
I let the Lord know now, God, if you don't show up, it's going to be a disaster today. <laughs> because without you. Now, I have to disagree a little bit with the Bible. Can I disagree a little bit? Not only can I, don't know if I do nothing, but I shall do a whole lot of mess up. <laughs> without him, I cannot be profitable. I, 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 you, listen, without him, it's not going to work. I don't care how smart you are, how much strategy you put into it, except the Lord build the house. Didn't say except you help him build it. Except the Lord build the house. It will not. It cannot stand. Y'all praying with me? Um, many churches try to do the work of the Holy Spirit, overstepping their jurisdiction by trying to control and manage people through a bunch of man-made rules and regulations. But the Bible says the Holy Spirit leads and directs. It's possible to overstep our boundaries, becoming busybodies, getting to other folks' business. So it is that we often find ourselves not only in other folks' business, we get in God's business. Many churches try to convince folk to get saved through consenting to various criteria. You, you got to do this and you can't do that. When the Bible says we're saved by grace through faith and not of works. In the book of Numbers, Numbers 23, 19, Moses says this about God. He says, God is not a man that he should lie, and neither the son of man that he should change his mind or repent. Hath he said it? Shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall not make it good? We minimize God whenever we take matters into our own hands. So Isaiah has shown us to beware of worldly influences and minimizing God. He thought that God couldn't handle a stumbling oxen. Fin Listen, to number three. Finally, one lesson we take away is to be aware of the sin of dishonoring God. The Lord's anger burned against Uzziah because of his irreverent act. Therefore God struck him down and he died there beside the ark of God. It's very important to understand that this ark now had been in Uzziah's house, his, his house. His daddy had been taken care of which means that he was seeing it frequently. It was in his house. It had become a common, everyday, visible relic in his mind. It's important to understand that. He had grown accustomed to seeing it there. He had become, listen now, familiar with it. Some have said that familiarity breeds contempt. Sometimes we could get a little too familiar with people and things. When I was a little boy growing up in the church, if any bishop, let alone a chief bishop, if any bishop came into the room, that's all, that's all he had to do. Everybody in the room would stand up. Now, a bishop come in the room and look at you. What's up, man? <laughs> now, listen, it's not about people being conceited. It's about having a reverence for the things and the people of God. You don't hear me, do you? We tell little children oftentimes, what well, we used to tell little children, what you tell them now growing up, three, four years, five years old, when they came to church that this is God's house. 
We tell them that, and we will say because it's God's house, certain behaviors you ought to have, certain ways you ought to conduct yourself. Why? Because this is God's house. Little children understand the concrete concepts of a, somebody having a house. Because they there used to be time, if you went to certain folk houses, they had plastic on the couch. <laughs> They had what they used to call a living room, a parlor, a front room, whatever you want to call it. And, and most of the time, you could not play in there. And so certain people's houses had certain rules. Certain folk had all these little figurines and angels and dolls. and You better not touch them. And so little kids understood the rules of the house. So you said this is God's house. And as they got older, they began to realize, now wait a minute, that this is not really a place where God lives. God lives everywhere. But they learned to respect the place by having understandings in the beginning. And later they began to have reverence for omnipresent God. So now whether they're in the church or in the street, they're learning and understand I got to have a certain respect I got to carry myself a certain way because the God I serve is in reality in every place. <laughs> Beholding the evil and the good, but again with a basic understanding. So it's always intrigues me. You know, I, it's okay. I mean, you know, I, I, I became minister years back in, goodness, 83. And then, then, Later on, got, became elder in 88, 87, became pastor in 89, somewhere in the 90s, became overseer in 2012, became bishop, 2018, became chief bishop, and all this is great, and, but my name really still Rex. You understand? But now when people keep calling me Rex, sometimes I wonder what their motivation is. especially those who never knew me. Y'all praying with me? Because sometimes when you become familiar with people, that's why that, that there are certain folk that you are dealing with on your job. You got to make certain you carry yourself a certain way. Can I say it like old folks say it? If you play with a puppy, he'll lick you in the face. <laughs> now, now, I'm, 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 I'm going to close here. If I don't close, I'm going to start meddling. I'm going to be in trouble. Don't nobody play more than I play. But I, I, even, even, even Rex had to learn how to stop playing so much. I was playing one time when I was teaching. I made a remark. I, you know, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, um, <laughs> and I was just playing. But she took it a whole nother corner and said something to me. I'm just, my mouth is as dry like, well, I better get back to the classroom now. <laughs> my point is that as Christians, be very, very careful that in lowering your standard, you don't lower the God in the face of others. Because after all, you are his representative. In fact, you told somebody you're one of his children. Let me get out your way. Listen. Perhaps Susa thought that since he had been working around the ark so long that he had gained some special privileges with God. Is that what it is? You think that you've been saved so long that God looks the other way now when it comes to you? Do you think that you have some get out of sin free tickets now? Do you think that somehow God is immune to our shortfalls? This passage is a vivid picture of where the lack of reverence for God can lead us. Yet there are those who saw a great deal of reverence and respect for things of God, but have very little respect for the people of God. 
they would gladly shout in the church but won't speak in the driveway. Y'all change the batteries. They would gladly shout in the church but can't speak to me in the driveway. See, we have great respect for God, but the people of God can jump off a cliff. They would rather pitch a fit about somebody putting their purse on the communion table but have no qualms about putting their mouth on somebody. The Bible asks the question, how can you love God whom you have not seen but hate, misuse, run down your brothers and sisters who you see every day? Now I'm going to leave you. In closing, it must be observed not just what happened to Uzzah, but where it happened. Verse 6, and it says here, and when they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzziah reached out and touched the hole of the ark of God because the oxen had stumbled. It's ironic that God would deal with Uzziah while he was on the threshing floor. This was a very special place for the people of that day. It was where the wheat harvest was taken to be processed. It was on the threshing floor that the farmer would beat the stalks of wheat, working to separate the wheat from the tear. The good part of the plant from the inedible part of the plant. He would beat the stalks, working to separate the wheat from the tear, separating that which was good from that which was bad, separating that which was right from that which was wrong. God had taken Uzzah to the threshing floor to deal with the sin that was hidden in him. The Lord's anger, verse 7, burned against Uzzah because of his irrelevant act. Therefore, God struck him down and he died beside the ark of God. There Uzziah lies dead in his sin. So then, brothers and sisters, having made aware of the various sins of Uzziah that resulted in his demise, and knowing full well now that we all have a little Uzziah in us, how do we intend to avoid the same end? Some say, well, Reverend, I'm just going to do better. I'm going to have to do better. I'm going to have to try harder. Perform better. And that generally means you're going to try to be more religious. I'm going to come out more to Bible studies. I'm going to get with a phone call on prayer. I'm going to join the choir. I'm going to join some other ministry. All these are fine things to do and things that could, we could benefit from, but they're not, going to able, they're not going to rid you from your burden of sin. You want to join the choir? Good. That's good. The Bible says Satan joined the choir. You want to come to prayer meeting? That's good. In the fourth chapter of Matthew, Satan came to prayer meeting. Somebody here is already a witness. You've already been there. You've already tried to get your act together, perform better, try harder, do better. That works for a while. What we have come to realize now The sins of Uzziah are not sins that you work your way out of. They are sins that you must repent your way out of. Let me leave you. Give me me this last one. Wherein in time past, Paul said, we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Remember that slide we showed you? I'm, I'm done now. I'm, I'm, I ain't going to holler today. Remember that slide when that little boy was told by his daddy? I've just painted the porch now. Don't be running up there. And, and rather than obeying him, he says, 
I'll be careful. Paul says this is a spirit of disobedience. He says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, it's something in all of us that believes we know best. Something in all of us resists being told what to do. Even if it's from your boss, whose role it is to provide supervision, we hate being supervised. We'll tolerate it, but we'd rather get the job done before they have to say something. Very few people look for that yearly evaluation. Well, somebody going to sit across from you that don't even know your job and critique your performance. I disliked it so much that when they would get done, I would say, are you through? Seriously. And I pull out my file. Well, let me ask you something and would have them in tears with my evaluation of them. Of course, promotions didn't come too quickly. <laughs> I'm saying to you, listen, that the reality, if you confess your sin, I believe that Uzziah had allowed himself to become indifferent to the presence and the power of God. He had become so familiar with the routines of religion, with the persistent coming of the memes and going before God's people with coming in and out of holy places, that he, be he began to lose the understanding of the God that he was around and the God that was around him. Right now, everything has a Christian title on it. There are more Christian types of music now, so-called, than ever before. You can turn on your cable TV. You can find Christian broadcasting companies. You can even go into Christian bookstores and find Christian sections. Some places even sell Christian jewelry saying things like, what would Jesus do? You can watch Christian movies. You can pack your bags and attend Christian conferences. You can even get on Christian cruises. If you want to have a good time with your loved one, go out to a Christian club. Listen to a Christian comedian. All types of things now. In fact, the world has become so christian -y and the church so worldly until we can't hardly separate the two. But when Paul oh, and, and Jesus talks about the sins of the world, they're not talking about the sins of the planet, the sins of nature, but rather the word world in this context means a system. It means a way of conducting society. So much so that Satan is called the prince of this world, not the prince of the planet, 
Because the earth is the Lord's. But the prince over this worldly system. And I think that we've all, some way or another, I said we're going to holler, didn't I? <laughs> Help us, Holy Ghost. We all somehow, some way have been influenced. And there are things that we all, as Christians, ought to know better. I'm going to leave you when I remind you, when Paul was delayed coming to see Timothy in Ephesus, Paul wrote a letter to him saying, and if I tarry long, I want you to know how to behave yourselves, how you ought to do it, in the house of God. In other words, there are some divine expectations that the Holy Ghost holds us all to a divine standard of procedures, of behaviors, and of actions. And I don't care. The old folks said he's so wide you can't get around him. And he's so high you can't get over it. And you got to come in at the door. Uzziah had forgotten about that I'm God, and beside me, there is no other. And so he reached out. He had forgotten about the fact that I sit high, but I look low. And so he reached out. He forgotten about the fact that I'm God, and I have no counselor. And so he reached out. He forgot about the fact I am that I am. And so he reached out. He forgot about I shall be what I shall be. I am the wheel that Ezekiel saw turning. I am the bush that Moses saw burning. I'm the ax that Joshua lifted and fought through the Philistines. I am God and beside me there is no other. Brother and sister, you got to come on now into this place of humbling ourselves and recognizing the right perspective. I am his servant. He is my shepherd. We are the people. We are the sheep of his pasture. We are those on bended knees before the majesty of God saying, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other, no other help I know. Put your hand together right here. Some things we know better, but we have to remind ourselves of our place in God. Imagine Uzzah's father when they said to him, your, your son died. Well, he, what, what happened? Did, 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 did somebody shoot an arrow? No. Well, what happened? Did he fall off some cliff? No. Well, what happened? He just touched the ark. So many things in life we can't explain. And there's so many times that all we have is the faith we got left. And there are hours in life where in the stillness of that moment, all we can utter is, Lord, help us. And can I tell you something? That's one of the most powerful prayers you can pray. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Those three little words says a lot. First of all, it says, I know where my help is. 
It says, number two, I need some help. And I know where to get it. And number three, there's a faith that says, I believe you'll answer. And you and I all come to a place where those three words become so important. And maybe somebody today, that's where you are, that you tried A, you tried plan B, <coughs> and now all you got left is, Lord, help me. <laughs> you, 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 you've, you've worked through it. You, you, you put in the applications. You, you've done your part. You apologize. And they still won't let it go. You, you got angry. You, you, you snatched down a couple of ceiling fans and cussed a few folks out of the office and you didn't mean to do all that, Sharon. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't even you. And now it's Lord help me. And you can sit here as if you've never been in a dilemma. You know one dilemma, Sharon? Just getting older. Stuff will bother you and hurt and carry on. You didn't know that thing. You didn't know something, a certain part of your body could even feel stuff. <laughs> and you know what's scary? As you get older, losing words. You ever try to call somebody's name and you know their name? <laughs> and like, uh, y'all know what I'm talking about. The one, the one with the green hair. Susie, yes, Susie, yes, Susie, Susie, that's right, Susie. <laughs> My pastor often say with those things that happen to you, he said, with your body and your mind do those kind of things, he would say, that those are just letters from home. Let you know this world is not your home. Those are letters from home. Eternity is saying, I, we miss you. Eternity is saying, when you coming to see me? Through it all. I've learned. Right there, right there. Hold it right there. Shh, right there. Keep it right there. And you know you have to learn some things about God. Trusting him it's not always that simple. As I think about the Oliver family and what they're going through right now, maybe you have another perspective because you've been there. But she hasn't. And so somehow she's and that family is going to have to learn to navigate this walk this way that they've never gone before. But those of folk who have, who have some experience with God can say, if I never had a problem, I couldn't tell you God could solve them. If I couldn't tell you that in a season like this, can I tell you that he'll take his arms the Lord would take his arms and put them all around you and see you through every storm. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And I know he's able. So I, I see Uzziah's father standing there with tears in his eyes. And yet, the hand of God says, I'm still God. And I got this. In the moment as we close this service, I want you to be crystal clear that he loves and he cares. 
And, and we see often the judgment of God in the land. Just to remind us, I, God is still real. That there, the, there was a brother here, he's going to be with the Lord now. He, he, he had been a recovering addict. And um, he was using some pretty, some pretty hard stuff. And every now and then, one of his buddies would die of an overdose. He came to me one day, he said, you know, you know so-and-so died last night, he'd overdose. That's what he did. He said something, I never forget stuff. He said, Pastor, it sounds rough, but sometimes that helps me. So I said, what you mean that, that, that helps you? Because I realized that could easily be me. If I let myself go back to where I came from, if I started using again, you understand this. Let me talk to, 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 to the, 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 are you going to Washington University? Let me, let me talk to the, the master quick. Yeah, yeah, let me talk to somebody with some, some good sense. Listen. <laughs> Jesus, some folks came to Jesus, you know, they said, listen. Jesus, did you, did, did you hear about how there were some Jews in the temple worshiping and the guards, the Romans guards came in there and killed all those Jews and mixed their blood with the blood of the sacrifice. Jesus, it, it, what, Jesus they said, Jesus, it wasn't that terrible. And then you know there were some people working on a tower and the tower fell while they were working on it and killed a lot of construction workers. They said, Lord, isn't that terrible? And I guess they thought Christ was going to say, yeah, man, that's, whoo, the Lord, the Lord help us, Lord help us. But you know what, Lord, what Jesus said to that? He said, listen, do you think those, those Jews who were killed in that temple, all those Jews who were killed by that falling tower, were living less moral lives than you? Do you think they were killed because something was wrong with their lifestyle? He says, let me tell you something. Except you all repent, all of you will likewise perish. So when you see the storms coming around St. Louis and over here in Arkansas, they tearing stuff up. and Don't, don't you know except we repent, we shall all likewise perish. What am I saying to you? It's that he reminds us from time to time don't play with me. Now, I love you. I care about you. But I told you stay off this porch. <laughs> Would you stand? I'm done with y'all. Let me tell you, it's through it all. We're about to pray now. Won't you come? Whatever your need might be. If you're here today and you need to give your life to Christ, won't you come? If you're looking for a church home and you desire to unite with this church, won't you come? If you need prayer for what you're going through, we're about to pray. Won't you come? If you've been sick and there's need for healing, won't you come? If there's someone in your family that needs help from heaven, come and stand for that loved one in your family. Maybe there's someone on your job that needs supernatural intervention. Maybe you want to come and stand for someone across the street from where you live. Perhaps there's a young person in your family that needs a supernatural move of God. Maybe you've done the best you can but a little more help will be in order right now. Whatever your concern, whatever your condition, God stands on ready. Before we pray and go down from this place, perhaps there's someone here, wherever you might be standing, whose desire it is to be saved and to give their life over to the Lord. 
If you're here today and you desire to give your life over to Christ, would you raise your hand wherever you might be standing? Is there one? Oh, God, I, I want to be born again. I don't leave here wondering about it. I want to know that I know I've been born again. If you're here today, you may say, well, Pastor, I know the Lord, but I am in need of a church home. Real people like you, they have real problems like you and I, but we serve a God that's really able. We're going, church, for a coming Christ. If you're here today and you desire to unite with this church as a believer in Christ, would you raise your hand wherever you might be standing? Church, say amen. Let's pray. Touch someone where you are. Reach over. Come around. Find somebody. Let somebody stand by themselves. Stand with somebody. Stand with, near somebody with somebody. Kind Father God, we bless your name. We honor you today. We thank you for the one that we're standing with and we're standing for. For the one that we're standing with, God, search every dynamic in his life, in her life. and Allow your spirit to move and inquire every need. Let love now flow and release them from every bondage. The power of Jesus now compels enemies to let go. Come against every power of the enemy. Standing in the victory of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray, Father, that you will store the reverence in our heart for you. That we will love you, but also honor you. That we honor you because you're God and there's none like you nowhere. Restore the joy of our salvation. Put us in our place that we might be in the place of all mercy, grace, and blessing. Pray now, God, that you'll bless this message and use it to remind us of your glory, of your honor. And now, God, as we leave this place, sanctify us wholly. Restore our purpose. Restore your glory. Place us in the place of work and worship that we might do the work of him that sent us while it's still day in our life, that we might have a mark left on this wall of time, that we've been here and we've done something to honor you while we came along this way. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Every child of God said, Amen. 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 Lord, a hand praise as you take your seat. <coughs> you ought to know better than that. Ushers and officers, help us now as we prepare this place to begin to worship God in our giving. Our God is a great God, and he is greatly, greatly, greatly to be praised. Again, we uh, pause for a moment to greet those who have joined us through the live stream efforts of the ministry. I want to thank God for those uh, individuals that work every week in these various areas of technology and audio and visual ministries and thank them for their sacrifice. And allowing you to join us uh, requires quite a bit of effort and coordination, but we're so delighted that you've chosen to be with us this morning. 8901 Pleasant View here in Fairview Heights, Illinois, the Church of Living God. It is our little piece of Holy Ghost headquarters in our community. So your presence on live stream is always welcome and we're delighted to have you here. Now you can share not only in the worship experience, but we're going to get you a chance to share with us as we worship God in our giving. If you are looking to give today, you can simply use your smart device, your cell phone, and you can text and give. Uh, you want to text the number 73256, and you're going to text it to COTLG203. Again, the number is 732 
five six and the message C O T L G that's an acronym for the Church of the Living God C O T L G two zero three and you can follow the instructions uh, there on your screen and you can give to us as the Lord so directs you you can also go on to our website uh, that's C O T L G Ministries dot org that's plural Ministries C O T L G Ministries dot org and uh, when you get to the uh, website, simply click on the tab that says give, follow the directions when the window falls down, and you can select just how you want to share your tithes, your offering, or perhaps your sacrificial gift. Now, don't leave us because we want to give you some good news about how you can strengthen the ministry even further uh, by joining our efforts next week in our online popcorn sales to give us to get us to a point where we can be debt free and can do even greater things for the Lord. For those who are here today, why don't you stand to your feet and help us to worship and reverence God in this hour. We worship God in the song, the dance, even the message, but we also worship God most certainly in our giving. Whatever well, mechanism you're using here, whether it's your phone, your envelope, whatever you're going to use, debit, whatever God has, if it's just in your heart, raise your hand where you're standing. Kind Father God, we thank you now for those who do walk in wisdom's way. Pray that your blessings would be abundantly shed upon them. We ask this blessing in the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost. And every child of God said, amen, amen. God bless you. If you will be so kind, the ushers are here this morning. Uh, if you'll turn and face the outward wall, if you're in the, in the balcony, make your descent down to my right, and they'll give you directions from the, the beginning at the rear of the auditorium. Go, now, even if you've given electronically, go ahead and walk around. Folks don't want to mess your shoes or your coins up. And uh, you, you get in a good mood now. Don't, don't have your bunions uh, cause you to fall out the spirit. Y'all say amen. Church, sure say amen. amen. Hey, Lord, a hand praise, would you? I think um, we had a little someone that wanted to unite, but we'll wait until the service is over with. Some, some people are a little nervous. I guess you make them a little nervous, and they don't want to come to Christ in front of you. We'll, 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 we'll definitely make that available after this service. God bless you. God keep you. Uh, again, uh, we thank you uh, for being part of uh, today's service and being here to support this ministry. This time, uh, before the benediction, we want to, um, well, no, we, we're, we're, let, let me do this. Bow your heads where you are. Kind Father, we thank you for those who've joined us today. The grace of God and now the fellowship of his son, Jesus. The power of the Holy Spirit might accompany them as they journey from this place, but never from your presence. Allow now this message and this work 
to be gendered in their hearts, that they may leave here stronger than they arrive, more determined to tell you yes to your will and your way. We ask this blessing on all others in Jesus' strong name. And the people of God said, amen. So now if you, if you got to dodge out, leave under that anointing of that benediction. Sister.